and welcome back to the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Uh, we are going to study today our continued Bible study in the book of Jeremiah. And with this video, we are on chapter 50. Wanted to pull up the value on this. That's why I had to look away here for a minute. Okay, so yes, on this video, we're doing chapter 50 in the book of Jeremiah. Uh, we've been looking at the prophetic ministry, which includes... Uh, for this particular uh, revelation and Bible study, it includes the prophets Jeremiah, Isaiah, Jose, and then Ezekiel. Those prophets in the Old Testament which were used in the prophetic ministry. Now, of course, we know the whole body of Christ is prophetic, and it's a prophetic ministry, but there were certain people that the Heavenly Father, and even today God uses specifically for that particular ministry. Okay, and um, he used Jeremiah to go before the children of Israel and the children of Z uh, Zudah, Zudah, Judah <laughs> to go before them many times and to basically give them warning signs that uh, he was getting ready to judge them or that he was displeased with their behavior in order for them to repent and then for them to uh, be back into alignment with their relationship with God. Okay. But uh, many times they didn't. So on these recorded moments that we've been looking at in the book of Jeremiah, he has been dealing with them in the land of Babylon, okay? Or I'm sorry, in the land of uh, Jerusalem. And he sent them over into the land of Babylon under the king Nebuchadnezzar to be under them, to be under his rulership and for him to reign over them because of how he was getting ready, how God was getting ready to go into Jerusalem and to destroy it, okay? Because those that were there that were not obedient, chose not to repent, chose not to believe Jeremiah the prophet when he came in and said that there was going to be a destruction. They were being destroyed also along with that prophecy. So we're going to take a look now in chapter 50 at the fact that now this was, this recording is showing when the children of Israel are in Babylon, they have been there a while, they have cohabited like the Heavenly Father told them to do, began to build and live their lives there, but there have they have begun to be mistreated by <laughs> King Nebuchadnezzar and, the, and all the Chaldeans in that particular area. So God, of course, is getting ready to take his judgment out upon them, just as he said he would do, okay? Because he did tell them after they were in the land for a while and they were being mistreated, uh, that he was going to come in and save them and then take them over and place them into their own land. Now, we talked about that in chapter 30. And I'm going to take us back over to it just so we can see and understand how we got to chapter 50 to the point where now that the children of Israel and the children of Judah, they're in Babylon, but King Nebuchadnezzar has began to change. changed. You know, just as we read in the book of Daniel, that was a moment in time when they were in, um, they were in Babylon, okay? And Deb King Nebuchadnezzar was reigning over. That's when he was a good servant until he began to want them to serve golden uh, images and different things. He began to be puffed up, basically. He, he began to take his authority the wrong way, okay? And then, uh, because God was using him Okay, he was not a part of the kingdom of, of heaven. Okay, he was not a part of the tribe of Israel, the royal priesthood, the royal people, God's chosen apple of his eye people. He was, King Nebuchadnezzar wasn't a part of that generation of people, but he was considered to be God's servant because God used him to serve a purpose to uh, chastise the children of Israel. And so, uh, therefore, when they did get over into the land where God sent them, uh, he began to extremely mistreat them. So here in chapter 30 of Jeremiah, we can see that the Lord says, uh, the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah, thus speaks the Lord God of Israel, saying, write all the words I've spoken to you. And I'm going to skip around verses here. These are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. The Lord said, we've heard a voice of trembling and of fear and not of peace. And then he says, uh, let me get down to the part. Verse 10, fear not, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, 
for I will save you from afar, and I see from the land of their captivity, and that was in Babylon. And Jacob shall return and shall be at rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with you, says the Lord, to save you. Though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered you, yet will I not make a full end of you, but I will correct you in measure and will not leave you altogether unpunished. Because the Heavenly Father has decreed and declared he will not leave us nor forsake us, but he did not say he would not judge us, he would not uh, chastise us, he didn't say that, but he did say it, I will not leave you nor forsake you. So that's what they're experiencing right here in this moment in time. So after that chastisement, though, he's coming in to save them. Because, uh, again, Nebuchadnezzar started going in a different direction with his rulership. And no doubt, because God knows all, he knew that was going to take place. That's why he told them he would be coming back to get them. So now we can go over to chapter 50 and begin our Bible study in this chapter. It's a pretty lengthy little chapter here. All right. So the word of the Lord that came, uh, that's the Lord spoke against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans. He spoke this by Jeremiah the prophets. He says, declare among the nations and publish and set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Babylon is taken. Old Baal is confounded. So Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded and her images are broken in pieces. For out of the north there comes up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove and they shall depart, both man and beast. So we see here the Heavenly Father is getting ready to send someone against them also. In those days and in that time, says the Lord, the children of Israel shall come. They and the children of Judah, they'll come together, going and weeping. They shall go and seek the Lord their God. And see, this is the time and the moment when God is going to come in and save them, okay? from after the Lord sends in who he's going to send in to be the chastisement against King Nebuchadnezzar and the Chaldeans after their mistreatment of the children of Israel and the children of Judah in their land, okay, in Babylon. And so he says, they shall ask the way to Zion with their faces with work, uh, their work, saying, come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Now that's what he's saying about Israel. Is how they. This is his heart of, of, in reference to Israel, in reference to this moment in time that uh, they've been mistreated, okay, in the land of Babylon, and so therefore this is how God sees them. He says uh, they shall ask the way to Zion because of the way they've been treated. And then verse six, my people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains, and they have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All that found them have devoured them. And their adversary said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Okay? So that's they felt like they had the right, because <laughs> they had uh, been disobedient to Heavenly Father. They had the right to do what they wanted to do to them. That's what it says here, verse 7, all that found them have devoured them. And their adversaries, this is what their adversaries said within themselves. We offend not because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Okay? And so verse 8 says, remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as he goes before the flocks. For I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon. Now this is who God is saying he's coming up against Babylon. An assembly of great nations from the north country. And they shall set themselves in array against her. Then uh, she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. And none shall return in vain. And Chaldea shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied with the Lord. Because you were glad. Because you rejoice. Now, this is what the Lord said about them, because this is what they did in reference to the children of Israel and the children of Judah, <clears throat> because they were sent over into their land, and they were sent under the uh, rulership of King Nebuchadnezzar. But, and the Chaldeans were there also, of course, but they began to take it 
as if, you know, this was a way and an opportunity for them to do whatever they wanted to do to the children of Israel. Because And this is what the Lord is saying here. He says, because you were, they were glad. They, were, they rejoiced, oh, you destroyers, he calls them of my inheritance. As they were destroying God's inheritance, they were rejoicing. He said, and because you are grown fat, they had gotten real wealthy, okay? Because that's what fat uh, is defined as out of the word of God. It's not defined as like fat, fat, overweight fat, obese fat, but it's defined as being wealthy, okay? So he says that they, they had been grown fat as the heifer at, at grass and bellow as bulls, real stuff, you know, puffed up. He said they had become bellow as bulls. It was hard. Okay, they had really gotten full of themselves, is the word that we use today. And um, God was getting ready to address that. And hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Because we're talking about the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and that may be happening today in the earth to the body of Christ, the saints of the kingdom today. And if in fact that it is, oh, heavenly father, we petition you right now as we're reading your word and we're seeing where you had to go in and you had to rescue and help where the children of Israel and the children of Judah were being mistreated. They were being destroyed and, and that it was your heritage then and the saints of God are your heritage today. You have decreed and declared by the covering of Jesus Christ, your only begotten son, that you sent into the earth to be our savior, to reign and to rule in the world in the name of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Heavenly Father, we ask you to do what you did for the children of Israel in that day and time. Do it for your saints today in the kingdom, Almighty God, whomever may be experienced this same type of treatment, Mighty God of Heaven. For it is your kingdom, your saints in the earth, O God, calling out for you mightily, O Heaven, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I almost went to a whole other place in the prayer, but I'm on Bible study. Okay, so uh, then verse 12 says, For your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Now, this is all that God is saying. He's getting ready to bring upon them. Shall be, behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goes by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss." at her plagues my god put yourselves in array against babylon around them around about them all you that bend the bow shoot at her spare no arrows for she has sinned against the lord okay and that they mistreated the children of israel and the children of judah when they were in their land so god says shout against her round about her she has given her hand her foundations are falling and her walls are thrown down, for it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her as she has done unto her. As she has done, do unto her. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And that is what the Lord is saying today. And we are pressing down to heaven in the name of Christ Jesus. I'm pressing up because heaven is up. But pressing in, hallelujah, to the spirit of the Lord, the holy God of heaven, Asking for his vengeance on behalf of the saints of God in the kingdom today again. Hallelujah. As we read your word, mighty Savior, mighty Savior, Jesus. Verse 16, cut off the sword from Babylon and him that handles the sickle in the time of harvest for fear of the oppressing sword that shall turn everyone to his people and they shall flee everyone to his own land. For Israel is a scattered sheep. Now this is again God's heart looking at his Israel, seeing all that's been done to them, okay? After he said how he's going to do the Chaldeans and the king of Babylon and over in the land of Babylon for the way that they mistreated the children of Israel. Now, that was from verses 11, no, verse 9, because he says, For I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations, my God, okay? So then going back, going to starting in verse 17, <clears throat> he goes back into talking about how he sees them again. Israel is my scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First, the king of Israel did it. So that's who's getting ready to get judged. And uh, first, the king of Assyria has devoured him. And last, this, the king Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has broken his bones. 
So therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land as I have punished the king of Assyria. And I will bring Israel again to his habitation and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan and his soul shall be satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead. And in those days and in that time, says the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for and there shall be none and the sins of Judah and they shall not be found for I will pardon them whom I reserve. Talking about his house, house of Israel and house of Judah, because see, the heavenly father placed them under King Nebuchadnezzar over in Babylon as their chastisement for their rebellion. And so therefore, as they were there, they began to do, like he said, to be uh, straightened up, really, and be, just live their lives and try to go right and do right. But as they were there, King Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king over them, began to rule them inappropriately. So that's how God began to want to go forward with his judgment upon King Nebuchadnezzar. Then verse 21 says, Go up against the land of Marathion, even against it and against the inhabitants of Pakad. Waste the utterly waste and utterly destroy after them, says the Lord, and do according to all that I have commanded you. A sound of battle is in the land and of a great destruction. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? Okay. I lay I have laid a snare for you. And thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou wast not aware, for thou art found and also caught, because thou hast striven against the Lord. Now see, that's a powerful verse right here, because he tells them that that was a snare, that was a trap, sending the children of Israel over there in order for them to mistreat them, because he knew that they were going to mistreat them, but he was also using them to be their chastisement, because God knew King Nebuchadnezzar didn't worship God, okay? So, um, and God tells him, it was a trap. It was a snare. He says, and he says it right here. Let me repeat it. Verse 24, I've laid a snare for you, and thou art also taken in the snare, O Babylon, and thou wast not aware that if thou art found, and also caught, because thou hast striven, you're striving, were striving against the Lord, Okay? Even after the children of Israel were sent over there, which God already knew because he knows everything. Then he says, the Lord has opened his armory and has brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For this is the work of the Lord, the God of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. Come against her from the utmost border. Open her storehouses, cast her up as heaps and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of hers be left. Slay all her bullocks. Let them be gone down to the slaughter. Woe unto them, for their day is come, the time of their visitation. For the voice of them that flees and escape out of the land of Babylon, to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple, because they have mistreated the children of Israel and Judah as, as they were in the land. And this is again him going forward, saying, Ah, call together the archers against Babylon, all the holy warring angels, because that's what archers, hallelujah, call them on, heaven. Bring them on for your kingdom, your saints in the earth today. Heavenly Father, your vengeance is always needed in Jesus' mighty name. He says, Call together the archers against Babylon, all you that bend and bow, that bend the bow, camp against it round about them. Let none thereof escape and recompense her according to her work, according to all that she has done. Do unto her, for she has been proud against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel. And so this is another chapter uh, in the book of Jeremiah that can relate to magna the uh, video that was done magnified against the Lord, okay, where the Moabites, Esau, tribe generation of uh, Esau, the uh, Moabites began to magnify themselves against the Lord. He began to go forward with judgment against them. And so this is somewhat similar to what they did. Okay. And he says, therefore shall her young men fall in the streets and all her men of war shall be cut off in that day, says the Lord. Behold, I'm against you, O thou most proud, says the Lord God of hosts, for thy day is come, the time that I will visit you. And the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him. 
For thus says the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captive held them fast. They refused to let them go. See what they did to them in the land of Babylon? The children, he says, thus says the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them, they made them cap, they took them, placed them in bondage in their land. So their redeemer is strong, though. The Lord of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. A sword is upon the Chaldeans, says the Lord, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. Oh, my Jesus, hallelujah. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dot. They shall be fools, he's saying. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. A sword is upon their horses, and upon their chariots, and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her. And they shall become as women. A sword is upon her treasures, and they shall be robbed. My God. See, they have reached a place with God because of how they had mistreated Israel and Judah so bad that he got he he destroyed Babylon worse than he destroyed over in Jerusalem because again Jerusalem's behavior happened because the children of Israel I mean Jerusalem's judgment became because of the children of Israel and Judah in that land and them disrespecting and being disobedient to God and following after the people in that land well, after that, God's punishment, or I should say his chastisement toward them, was for them to go under the rulership of King Nebuchadnezzar in his land, okay? But nevertheless, he was killing two, how do they say that? Kill two stones, kill two birds with one stone at one time, because he was raising, he's gonna, he was judging the tribe of Israel and getting ready to go into judgment with the king of Nebuchadnezzar and the Chaldeans as he was finishing up what he had done with the children of Israel. So then going on here, we're still in chapter 50 of the book of Jeremiah. This is a very lengthy chapter, but it's great. Verse 38, a drought is upon her waters and they shall be dried up for it is the land of graven images and they are mad upon their idols. Okay, because again, they didn't worship God in that land. Therefore, the wild beasts of the desert with the wild beasts of the islands shall dwell there and the owls shall dwell therein. And it shall be no more inhibited forever. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. And as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, said the Lord, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell there. For behold, a people shall come forth from the north, and a great nation, many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. They shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses. Everyone put in array like a man to the battle against you, O daughter of Babylon. For the king of Babylon has heard the report of them, and his hands are wax feeble. Anguish took hold on him, and pangs as of a woman in travail. He was getting scared, because again, when the Lord gets ready to deal with you, you will get scared. Okay, and that's where he was going, King Nebuchadnezzar, he, or he had went, I should say. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan unto the habitation of the strong, but I will make them suddenly run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? Now, this is God saying this. And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord, that he has taken against Babylon and his purposes, that he has purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. And at the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. That's going to be a mighty, well, going to be, it was a mighty destruction that took place at that moment in time. Because of, again, uh, they magnified themselves against the Lord, okay? Because they magnified themselves against the house of Israel, the house of Judah. Uh, so, therefore, God's judgment was promised for them, okay? 
All right, so that's the end of our Bible study for today in chapter 50 from the book of Jeremiah. God bless you. God be with you. And I will see you on our next Bible study video as we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel.